Welcome back to Dr. Suchita's interactive class. Today we will see one of the thermal analysis technique that is differential scanning calorimetry. We will look after for the principle, instrumentation, factors affecting this instrument and application part of it. Before uh, going through this particular topic, I will request you to revise the prior thermal analysis technique that is thermal gravimetric analysis and differential thermal analysis. Now this particular technique of differential scanning calorimetry was developed by E. S. Watson and O'Neill in 1962 which was introduced as a commercially um, useful instrument as an applied spectroscopy during the conference of analytical chemistry. This particular technique has been introduced as an application towards the biochemistry. This particular instrument has been considered as an uh, instrument which will measure the energy directly and allows precise measurement of heat capacity. Now, in this particular uh, instrument, we are going to take sample and reference which are heated separately by separate heaters in such a way that the temperature is kept same or equal. Now, while uh, doing the analysis, we are applying the uh, electrical current and we are going to uh, see that if I increase the temperature or decrease the temperature, what is the effect on between the sample and reference where we are going to measure the um, heat transfer to and fro from the sample and reference during this particular process. Differential scanning calorimetry is a thermal analysis like differential thermal analysis and thermogravimetric analysis. Here the heat flow into or out of the sample which is measured as a function of temperature or time. The curve obtained after doing this particular analysis is a curve of heat flux versus temperature or time. We are going to measure the heat given out as a heat flux versus temperature and time. There are two different conventions like exothermic reactions uh, and endothermic reaction. This says a simple uh, instrumental part of differential scanning calorimetry where computer system has been attached and software has been attached to the system where we are going to take sample specifically I have shown over here a polymer sample and a reference pan. Both of them are heated and we are going to check out heat given out or absorbed by both of them under equal temperature system. This particular uh, slide represents you and commercial instrument, flow diagram of instrument and what actually happens with the reference and sample when they are heated uh, uh, through that uh, particular system where heat you are applying and the heat flux will major, this sensor will major the heat given out or absorbed by the sample as a majoring cell. Again, these are the commercially uh, useful and uh, instrument of DSC. The block diagram of DSC will clarify you how the system works actually. This sensor will measure the heat given out and absorbed by your sample and the reference system which are being programmed through the computer for the applied temperature system. This is an atmosphere control where you are initially going to keep the sample and reference at the same temperature and data recording system will give out the output. Now the sample container utilized in DSC, it has been designed in such a way that it can withstand the high pressure as well as temperature. For high temperature system you can go for platinum or ceramic and for low temperature system you can utilize a sample container made up of aluminium. The reference material which you can utilize in DSC is calcite alumina Al203 or silicon carbide. The temperature controller used to maintain the temperature between sample and reference. Uh, uh, sample and reference at a desired value. The furnace in which the sample and reference are being kept in a one block system where the temperature is comp compensated as an DSC. 
whereas two block system where the power is compensated by dsc the detector which has been utilized to measure the heat flux is an thermocouple to measure the temperature change under controlled environment when and uh, how this technique or for which sample i can utilize this techniques the, so this is specially utilized to study the polymers or the samples uh, upon heating where it will show me the thermal transitions like melting or uh, melting glass transition crystallization temperature there are two different types of dsc commercially available one is heat flux type where one block is being utilized to heat both sample as well as reference cell so the source in this case for sample and reference remains the same to measure the delta t value between these two whereas the second system or the second type of instrument is power compensated where sample and reference both are heated separately as an individual heater system and then the delta t is measured between them uh, as an output obtained now the dsc curve which is obtained as an heat flux versus time or temperature which is observed the typical dsc curves i have i have shown over here which is quite similar to dta where this is an baseline or we can say zero line system where sample and reference are initially kept at same temperature the exothermic peak is observed when heat is released by the uh, system and endothermic when heat is absorbed by the system so these transitions are typical uh, transition observed with respect to dsc curve now this particular heat flux versus temperature or time this dsc curve uh, i have shown try to shown over here where it will show me different types of transitions observed for a uh, system we have considered over here polymer now i can calculate the enthalpies of different transitions by integrating the peak corresponding to transition so this uh, the area under the peak is directly proportional to the heat absorbed or evolved by the reaction and height of the curve is proportional to the rate of reaction area under the curve is proportional to heat absorbed by the reaction and height is directly proportional to the rate of reaction so i can integ integrate the peak to calculate different enthalpy transition we'll see in detail this so this dsc curve is employed to determine the enthalpy of transition by integrating the peak now i can integrate the peak and find out the enthalpy by simply equation delta h equal to k into a where k is the calorimetric constant a is the area under the peak and delta h is an enthalpy of transition so this particular dsc curve i can utilize to calculate specific heat capacity like cp of a material which is under uh, uh, study the specific heat capacity cp is equal to absolute value of heat flow divided by heating rate so absolute value of heat flow is nothing but what heat applied per unit time and heating rate is nothing but temperature increase per unit time so cp equal to q upon t divided by delta h delta t upon t so i can simplify this equation as heat capacity cp equal to q upon delta t so this particular dsc curve can analyze or can measure different transitions like glass transition melting and boiling point crystallization time and temperature percent crystallinity heat of fusion and reactions specific heat capacity oxidative or thermal stability rate and degree of cure reaction kinetics and purity of a sample there are two types of dsc curves mm, uh, dsc uh, curves where factors affecting these dsc curves are instrumental factors like geometry of sample holder furnace heating rate geometry of the sample holder whether it is open curve closed curve deep curve so these are the different types of sample holders geometry of the sample furnace heating rate which i am applying uh, to increase the temperature of the system in which sample and reference has been kept recording balance uh, the uh, sensitivity of the recording balance the um, 
precision of the recording balance matters a lot while uh, measuring the temperature difference between sample and reference furnace atmosphere it should be inert sensitivity of the recording system composition of sample container it is made up of what it will also affect your tsc curve now the geometry of sample actually does not vary much the result of dsc but the sample holder shape size and materials uh, also affect the dsc curve the sample holder you can utilize made up of quartz platinum ceramic stainless steel or graphite so these are the different types of the material which are available which can hold the temperature the higher temperature during the analysis process of dsc curve the instrumental factor further like recording system it should be of high accuracy it should reproduce the result sensitive and it should have a capacity that similar to those of an analytical balance so adequate range of atomic weight adjustment should be done and the furnace atmosphere yes it will definitely affect like we have seen in case of dtm that if i use air if i use co2 and if i use n2 that is inert atmosphere the result vary the same will be observed in case of dsc2 now if i uh, will change the heating rate does my dsc curve affects we'll see this in detail that if suppose i'll be taking a particular sample and i'll be varying the heating rate like here the heating rate is 1 degree per minute 2 degree per minute 5 degree per minute 10 degree per minute and 15 degree per minute if i do this variation how my dsc curve affect for same amount of sample same amount of atmosphere same type of material of pan utilize so keeping all other conditions constant if i'll do little bit variation with heating rate then what happen with the onset of melting point onset of melting point is the one here when the melting has been started so this onset of melting point does not show any particular variation with respect to the uh, change in the heating rate but but the peak point just check out the peak point has done lot of variation and it it has been shifted little bit towards the higher temperature side so this variation has been observed variation with respect to peak point and melting shifts little bit towards the higher side if i increase the heating rate now the factors affecting with respect to the sample characteristic like amount of the sample nature of the sample sample picking system or packing system in that particular um, sample holder solubility of gases in the sample whatever the gases are released from the sample whether they again get soluble into your sample particle size whether it is large small very small compactness feeling of the sample inside the container and the heat reaction of thermal conductivity during the process if i do variation with respect to the amount of the sample amount of the sample how it affect my dsc curve we'll see this particular factor in detail that if i took if i took 0.5 mg 1 2 3 5 if i do little bit variation with respect to amount of the sample then the thermal properties will show me variation with respect to the dsc curve when i am studying this uh, effect of sample weight the conditions like heating rate sample holder material of the sample atmosphere all other conditions i need to keep constant then what has been observed that onset of melting point peak point of melting and enthalpy all of these shows variation with respect to amount of the sample see dotted lines will show you that onset of melting point shows little bit shift this peak point shows little bit shift and the enthalpy that is the area under the curve also shows me variation with respect to the amount of the sample which i have chosen so you have to take care when you want to reproduce the result amount of the sample should be taken under the study should be remain same to reproduce the result this is again the same uh, with respect to the uh, amount of the sample but if the type of material is of different then it has been shows that 
if I go for 15 milligram 10 4 1.7 so I have decreased this amount of the sample and I have kept all other conditions same then onset of melting point has does not shown me any particular change in this case but the peak area peak point and the temperature shows me little bit variation with respect to the sample under analysis there are a various advantage of DSE that one of the big advantage is that the sample is easily encapsulated that means I can easily uh, without any uh, um, particular or definite treatment is required for the sample I can utilize as it is so easily encapsulated no uh, more preparation is required for this particular analysis uh, by utilizing DSE it can be done very quickly and easily small amount of the sample is required and uh, this particular technique is versatile and simple to obtain the results like enthalpy, transition temperature, melting point, boiling point. Disadvantage of this particular technique is it has low accuracy, not be used for overlapping reactions and difficulties in a test cell preparation uh, is uh, in avoiding uh, evaporation of volatile solvents uh, does not affect or it can does not uh, detect the gas which is released during the process uh, when we look forward for the application part of the TSC it is applied for the nano science uh, where the crystalline or amorphous phase of the nano solids which is utilized routinely in pharmaceuticals so quantification of such compounds is possible by utilizing DSC I can utilize DSC in uh, analysis of proteins that is in biology where thermodynamic investigation of these particular various types of proteins with high priority and specific complexes I can carry out simply by utilizing DSC now when uh, uh, I want to interpret the data obtained uh, from the DSC that various transitions like glass transition crystallization polymorphic uh, changes convergence melting uh, polymorphic convergence again and denaturation uh, here a cross-linking core oxidation or decomposition this is a complete curve obtained for a particular polymer to show different types of transition we'll go one by one how each step of transition I can able to analyze so the first step of transition in this particular curve is with respect to glass transition temperature in DSC where yes where when I have started taking the sample just I have taken the sample and started heating the polymer so this little bit shift downwards towards the temperature this is uh, this means there is more heat flow and increase in heat capacity there is an increase in heat capacity of the polymer this happens this happens when poly polymer has just gone through the glass transition so this is a glass transition temperature which is observed because of change in heat capacity this particular glass transition temperature we can obtain by DSC where it has been little bit shift from the higher temperature to uh, towards the higher temperature side and we can measure this particular step for polymers now after going through the glass transition if I am further heating this particular sample uh, it, uh, which uh, uh, has uh, been uh, converted into mobile uh, little bit higher mobility where um, they may be wiggle or scream that means they uh, never stay at one position they will just mold and try to release the pressure so this is the process where uh, I have converted from glass transition and still I am heating so this particular arrangement of the crystal arrangement of the polymer has been shifted from uh, shifted towards the very high order arrangement or we can call that it as a crystalline temperature so this is the highest point or peak point uh, uh, where it will show me an exo peak or exothermic peak where this uh, is the point where orderly arrangement of the polymer is observed hence this particular temperature is noted as crystallization temperature of the polymer now when I am further heating the, uh, this poly particular polymer 
after crystallization it exhibits some endothermic peak which is nothing but the peak of melting point of a particular polymer or we can say this particular point as an onset melting point which can be uh, uh, determined by further heating of the particular polymer and extrapolation of this particular uh, uh, area under the peak i can find out the enthalpy change which will be obtained as uh, in per, uh, terms of joules per mole by utilizing the equation if further i am heating this particular polymer after obtaining the uh, melting point uh, this particular polymer i can uh, say that it has the orderly arranged molecule uh, now began to move freely and they are going to melt and they are going to fall separate to uh, obtain the melting point of particular polymer tc is nothing but your crystallization temperature whereas tm is nothing but the melting point of polymer while putting all these things together what i can see that when i am heating a particular polymer i can observe the heated fast and its temperature is this is the transition temperature glass transition temperature when i am obtaining a big peak uh, that can be defined as a crystallization temperature of a polymer when i am observe a big deep i can define it as an melting temperature of a given polymer so from dsc plot what i can get a big difference uh, between the glass transition and other two thermal transition like crystallization and melting for glass transition there is no dip there is there is no peak there is no latent heat given off or absorb the polymer is uh, while uh, converting that polymer into glass transition but for melting and crystallization the heat has been given off or absorbed uh, that uh, biggest difference i have obtained so this glass transition temperature is different from your dta curve so dsc curve uh, we, you can uh, easily differentiate from dta where this particular step has been not observed in case of dta when i want to measure the purity of a particular compound i can utilize this technique here the example uh, has been shown with respect to benzoic acid where i have taken a benzoic acid keeping into mind all other conditions of sample holder atmosphere heating rate uh, uh, has been uh, kept constant so what has been observed with respect to the peak width when i am heating the sample with low impurity or less pure sample and when i am taking very highly pure sample how this will show me variation and how it will be differentiated by dsc it has been shown over here that onset of melting point onset of melting point had shown me a bigger shift when i choose from impure to pure sample similarly peak depth or peak point has been shifted to higher temperature and area under the peak is also giving the what is the enthalpy is also showing me the change when i am utilizing or the purity of the sample has been increased so accurate measurement of delta enthalpy of the reaction for polymorphism uh, we can easily interpret by dsc again one more example with respect to purity determination by dsc where phenacetine has been utilized this is an uh, pharmaceutical drug where pain relieving fear reducing and analgesic drug the purity of this drug once the uh, company has manufactured this particular drug we can check out by different batches where which batch is giving me high or purity uh, determination is possible by utilizing dsc so here again the same observation has been observed with respect to onset of melting point has been changed as i move towards the pure sample uh, enthalpy is also showing me change and the peak point has been shifted towards the higher temperature differential scanning colorimetry uh, where i can utilize this technique for identification or separation or fingerprinting of the material suppose different types of plastic has been collected melted and mold is observed and you want to differentiate or you want to find out different definitely which are the different types of plastic has been uh, mixed in this particular material so this particular plot of uh, heat flux versus the temperature or dsc response for dsc curve tells me the polymer identification 
where LDPE low density, high density polymer, polyethylene polymer, nylon 6, nylon 66 and PTFE. Glass transition temperature, yes, uh, by utilizing DSE. Metastable uh, form of uh, particular polymer, stable form of particular polymer and transition form. Of. So this scan of crystalline material of polymorphic transition gives me a detailed information with the metastable form, stable form and transition form. Pseudo uh, polymorphism. I can detect the pseudo polymorphism by using DSE. Here the plot has been shown with respect to hydrate sample where I can find out just a moment where I can find out the uh, dehydration uh, point and the melting point of a particular uh, polymer under the study by using DSC. Yes, for amorphous material, how I can go for the finding out the glass transition temperature? So, this is the point where I can find out the glass transition temperature for amorphous solid. Now, when I am comparing the techniques like uh, thermogrammetric analysis, th differential thermal analysis and DSC, what actually differentiate between all these thermal analysis techniques is thermogrammetric technique measures the mass of the sample, how it vary with increase in temperature. DTA measures the difference between sample and reference with respect to temperature, whereas D, differential scanning calorimetry measures the heat flow difference between uh, sample and the reference. Looking at the application, mass change is not observed in case of DSC, whereas I can utilize the DSC for qualitative as well as for quantitative. We have seen for the uh, separation or identification of uh, plastic uh, where we have qualitatively analyzed the particular sample and quantitatively we have seen onset of melting point, area under the peak, enthalpy change that can be utilized and found out by utilizing DSC. These are the references useful for further study. Hope you have understood and like this uh, particular video to uh, uh, analyze the technique of DSC instrumentation, their application, factors affecting and interpretation of data. Thank you.